but in Pittsburgh. Dan, thank you. And for more, let's bring in Ambassador Danny Danon, Israel's permanent representative to the United Nations. And Danny, there's this question that keeps being asked in Pittsburgh. Is this isolated or is this part of a larger strand of anti-Semitism that has been emerging in the United States? Do you have a view on that? Good evening. Unfortunately, anti-Semitism is on the rise in Europe and in the United States. We saw that uh, on social media, all over the internet, and we're paying a heavy price for that. And I think it is time to take action. It is time not only to speak against anti-Semitism, but to act against anti-Semitism. I think first thing we should think about security in synagogues. It's unfortunate. We, we saw that in Europe, in France, for example, you will not enter a synagogue without going through some kind of a security check. I think we are entering a reality today in the U.S. that you will need to add security to every synagogue in the U.S. And the second point is social media. I believe that we should monitor potential murderers. We saw what happened a few days ago in Pittsburgh, what happened three years ago in a church in Charleston. I think the authorities must find a way, a legal, ethical way, to monitor those who call for violence on the web. This attack took place in Pittsburgh, but reactions pouring in from Israel it's just as if it has taken place in some city around the country. How do you explain that? We are one people. We feel the pain of the people uh, of Pittsburgh. And unfortunately, we have experienced those kind of attacks. I recall when I was Deputy Minister of Defense in 2014, and when I had to enter a synagogue after a massacre in Jerusalem. This is horrible. We, we hug the community, we pray with them, and we know that we are together, and we will prevail together. Is there a single way that the community of Pittsburgh can start to move on? I mean, given the experience that Israel has had, unfortunately, with this, how do you move on from this? So in the Jewish tradition, we have the Siva, the seven days that we, we take our time, we, we mourn together, we don't speak about the future. That's what we are doing today. And I think after a week, we will sit down with the authorities here in the U.S., the Jewish community leaders, and we will think about the future. Danny, Israel's chief Ashkenazi rabbi, he refused to call the Tree of Life a synagogue, although Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, in a tweet, he said that Jews were killed in a synagogue. He made it very clear. But the majority of American Jews are liberal, and that's only a bit of the greater rift between them and the Israeli right-wing government. How do you see um, the process of starting to bridge this gap? The Israeli people are standing with the, the Jewish community, Today, we don't have left or right, we don't have orthodox, reform or conservative, we are one people. And this coward, when he entered the synagogue, he came to this place because he knew he would find Jewish people praying in this holy place. So we are together with the people of Pittsburgh today. But you can understand why a lot of American Jews who might hear of the chief rabbi in Israel saying this might be disillusioned by his comments. No, I think those who understand and know Israel they know exactly what the Israelis are thinking. And we are a, a democracy, so you have so many opinions, but the vast majority of Israelis are hugging the community and are with the community today. I believe that in, in your position, you probably hear more personal stories from people about anti-Semitism. What concerns you the most when you talk to people here in different, different communities around the United States? I think it's unfortunate today, in 2018, that you feel anti-Semitism everywhere. Sometimes when you go to a college campus, even here in New York City, you will hear anti-Semitism. I feel it at the corridors of the UN. And I think we should not allow it to become part of our life. We should call it, we should fight it. And you know, hearing Louis Farrakhan only a few days ago speaking against the Jews, so I don't think we should ignore those who attack the Jewish people here in America. But you would agree it's not just on the left and not just on the right, it's across the political spectrum. Absolutely. It has nothing to do with politics. And by the way, we had to face anti-Semitism ages ago. Today is a new form of anti-Semitism. They're using social media. And I think the next stage for us, the next challenge, is to deal with anti-Semitism on the web. Ambassador Danone, we're going to take a short break, but you're staying with us because we want your take on recent developments across the Middle East. And still ahead, in the wake of this weekend's shooting at a synagogue in Pittsburgh, Iran and the terror group Hamas have extended their condolences to the victims and their families. What does the ambassador think about that? Plus, a new report claims Britain knew of the plot to kidnap journalist Jamal Khashoggi and begged Saudi Arabia to abort the plan. for news.
show about, by the way. This show is called Man Bites Dog. How does that relate to it's just a philosophy? Oh. It doesn't. We're okay. making it up as we go along. <laughs> okay, great. There's more to the news than meets the eye. With the fast-paced, constantly changing headlines, we take you deeper, bringing you fresh insights into the conflicts, breakthroughs, heartaches and victories shaping your world. Unpacking the day's main events from angles you might not expect. I'm Tracy Alexander. Join me for Perspectives. Strictly Security. Your weekly look into security, intelligence, and strategic affairs. Our team brings the latest on the major international conflicts. Analysis of the major security issues right here in the Middle East and around the globe. Join us for a close look at innovative military technology and get up to speed with what's happening in cyberspace. Saturdays only on I-24 News. The Middle East. I-24 News is a witness. Our journalists live and breathe there every day. Get all the latest global news from our studios in Tel Aviv, New York, Washington, and Paris. Anytime, anywhere. Download the I-24 News app, available on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple, and Google stores. I-24 News. See beyond. Welcome back. Iran and the terror group Hamas have expressed their condolences to the victims of this weekend's shooting massacre at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. Iran's Foreign Minister Mohammad Javid Zarif wrote on Twitter, quote, extremism and terrorism know no race or religion and must be condemned in all cases. The world deserves better than to have to live with weaponized demagoguery. Hamas also denounced this weekend's violence, but then also went on to, to describe themselves as the victims of the terror of Israeli occupation. For more on this, let's bring back in Ambassador Danny Danone, Israel's permanent representative to the United Nations. Ambassador, how do you see these reactions, these condemnations coming from Iran, from Hamas? Is that surprising? Is this, is this is ridiculous. We don't buy it. You know, in Iran, every year they have a competition for Holocaust denier. And they're paying thousands of dollars for the winners. Hamas, they're teaching the children to kill Jews every day. So we don't buy those empty remarks. If they really believe it, they should change what they're teaching in schools, change what they're doing in the streets. So they're taking advantage of this unfortunate uh, reality. So what are they up to? Is it just uh, they're trying to be clever about their PR? I mean, what drives them? I mean, why not just say nothing if they really feel that, you know, Jews deserve to be dead and the Holocaust never happened and they want to expunge Jews from wherever? Why not say nothing? Because sometimes they are trying to pretend that they, that they belong to the Western societies, that they have some kind of a rule of law. It is not the case. Those regimes have no rule of law and they are full of hatred and incitement. Ambassador, today, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas said that the PLO will no longer recognize the state of Israel, and it just seems like instead of going forward with negotiations, the two sides are going backwards. Does it concern you or even surprise you that Abbas is using this rhetoric? It is unfortunate, but it's not a surprise. It's not the first time, by the way, that he's saying uh, the same thing and he's threatening. He's saying no to the U.S. involvement, he's saying no to the U.N. involvement, and he's saying no to the Israeli cooperation. By the way, the cooperation between the Israeli and the Palestinians is important to Abbas himself. You know, in the past, we actually provided information that saved Abbas's life. So I, I think he will have to consider very well before he decides to cut the connection with Israel. Every Friday, there have been uh, large demonstrations along the Gaza border fence. Some Palestinian militants have thrown rocks and bottles and hand grenades. Israeli troops have opened fire with tear gas and live fire. Palestinians have been killed. And then there have also been the rock attacks fired from Gaza into Israel and Israel with airstrikes in response. How does this end? I mean, how does it wind down? Those are not demonstrations. Those are riots, orchestrated riots uh, by Hamas. And I think they are using uh, those people and sending them to the fence. So it's up to Hamas to decide whether they want to continue or to stop with that. We have no intention to see any escalation in the region. But at the same time, if they will send rockets to our cities, we will respond. 
But on one hand, there are still talks of ceasefire with Hamas going on. Israeli Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman, however, he's not a big proponent of, of this process. He thinks that Israel should give Hamas a major blow and end the circle or get quiet for just a while. Which approach do you support? What do you think is the right way to go about this? Prime Minister Netanyahu is very clear on this issue. If they will be quiet in Israel, it will be quiet in Gaza. If it will not be quiet in our towns, we will chess the Hamas leaders. And they should know we do have the capabilities to hit them hard. We have no intention for that, but if we will have no choice, we will show them the might of the IDF. Is there also an opportunity, though, for more humanitarian aid to go in if they're quiet along the border? If these were to stop, would that open up border crossings and allow more supplies to go in? And for, uh, absolutely. Unfortunately, Abbas himself is blocking humanitarian support to the people of Gaza. Qatar offered to transfer more funds so they will have more than four hours of electricity a day. And we support that. He's blocking those initiatives. He's actually working against the well-being of the Palestinians in Gaza. Ambassador, I want to end this on a more positive uh, tone because over the last couple of days we've seen the Israeli national anthem being played in Abu Dhabi after an Israeli judo star won a tournament there. And Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his wife Sarah, they were in a, they had a very rare visit to Oman. Um, this for sure marks a certain ch change towards uh, Israel in the region. Do you feel this in the United Nations? First, we are very happy that we won uh, two gold medals. <laughs> Usually it doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, and yes, we, we feel that change. I visited Dubai uh, two years ago, mm -hmm. and as you mentioned, the Prime Minister visited Oman. And usually it happens quietly. And I think it is about time that we will walk, you know, above the ground and we will have uh, public cooperation with those important countries. Ambassador Danny Danone, thanks for coming into our studio. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you. you.